This episode of Kobe Explains is brought to you by Manscaped. So a few weeks ago, Boeing's new CEO of commercial aircraft, Stan Deal, sat down for a conversation with the Seattle Times. This was his first interview in his new role, and it covered a range of subjects from the 737 MAX's return to the state of aviation during COVID. But by far the most interesting topic that he covered was regarding the 787 program. And no, I'm not talking about the Dreamliner's recent production delays and quality control issues. I'm referring to the fact that Boeing is seriously evaluating not one, but two new 787 variants. This might seem like odd timing for the 787. Like I just alluded to, the program's been kind of a mess recently. So why then is Boeing looking to develop new versions of the Dreamliner? And why are they choosing to do so now? Let me explain. Before hopping in, YouTube is still telling me fewer than 20% of the people watching this video are actually subscribed to the channel. So make sure you hit that button and bell so we can build the absolute best community in aviation together. Now in the Seattle Times interview, Deal shed some light on Boeing's plans to launch new, high gross weight versions of the 787. But what exactly is a high gross weight plane? Well, it's pretty much exactly like its name implies. It's a jet that's been modified to carry more weight by reinforcing parts of the airframe. In most cases, this is done so a jet can carry more fuel and increase its range. Boeing's developed a number of high gross weight planes in the past, with the 777-300ER being its most successful. And these new 787s are likely to retain that ER naming convention, which, from a marketing perspective, helps emphasize their ability to fly further. The first 787ER the company plans to launch is the 787-10ER. This plane is designed to supplant the existing 787-10 and better compete with the A350. Now, I've detailed the rivalry between the Dash 10 and the A350-900 in a prior video, and I'll be sure to link that video in the description. But in brief, both aircraft were built to replace the venerable 777-200ER, but have done so with very different levels of success. To date, the A350-900 has outsold the Dash 10 by a count of 4 to 1. Part of that can be attributed to the A350's head start. It first entered service in 2014, while the Dash 10 was first delivered in 2018. But more importantly, the A350 is just an all-around more capable aircraft, largely due to the fact that it was explicitly designed to replace the 777, whereas the 787 wasn't. The 787 was always meant to slot below the 777 so that it could dominate as a mid-sized widebody. It wasn't until the A350 started to steal away 777 loyalists like Cathay Pacific, Asiana, and Delta that Boeing decided to Frankenstein the 787 and create a competitor. And while this uber-stretched version of the 787 has helped stem the tide to some degree, it remains an inferior machine. It has significantly shorter range than both the A350-900 and the 777-200ER that it hopes to replace. Now, the idea of Boeing taking another crack at the Dash 10 has actually been simmering for quite a while now. In 2019, Air New Zealand kicked off its efforts to replace its own 777-200s. Now, its widebody fleet already consists entirely of Boeing aircraft, so the airline's first move was to evaluate the Dash 10. However, it soon became clear the plane's range limitations would prevent it from operating critical routes to the US. So, to keep Air New Zealand from also defecting to Airbus, Boeing promised they'd explore options to improve the Dash 10 if they placed an order with them, which they did. So what is the 787-10 ER actually going to look like? Well, physically, it will be almost indistinguishable from the Dash 10, much like the 777-300ER looks nearly identical to the 777-300. But with bigger fuel tanks, the plane will have about 1,000 nautical miles of additional range, which still doesn't quite match either the A350 or the 777, but it does get much closer. What's more, the increased mTOW will allow the plane to carry more cargo, which will also be an appealing selling point. But let's shift gears for a second, because the Dash 10 ER is not the only new 787 Boeing wants to build. Lima News has exclusively reported that Boeing is also looking to develop a 787-9 ER. 
At first, I was a little bit puzzled by this. The Dash 9 is already a remarkably capable machine that's both saturated the market and beats its main competitor, the A33900, in pretty much every performance measure. So if it's already the clear market leader, why is Boeing investing more resources to expand its range? Well, this one's a little bit harder to decipher. The business case isn't quite as clear. But there is one possibility I find really interesting. Now, as a caveat, this is just speculation. But speculation is fun, so long as it actually makes sense. So here's my theory. This move could be a renewed play at Project Sunrise. For those of you who don't recall, Project Sunrise was a study commissioned by Qantas assessing the feasibility of direct flights to Sydney from both New York and London. These two cities are massive economic centers that do a lot of business with Australia, yet no current commercial jet can connect them without a refueling stop. So Qantas pitted Boeing against Airbus to see who could develop a more compelling jet to carry out the 20-hour journey. Ultimately, it was Airbus and its A350-1000 ULR that beat out Boeing and its 777-8. Qantas signed an MOU for a dozen of the type, but critically, they did not sign a firm order. And with what's happened over the last few years, Qantas might want to reevaluate the whole endeavor and reconsider which plane is actually best suited for the job. You see, Project Sunrise flights will be largely catered to business travel, and its planes will be configured with more premium seats than normal. However, the recent decline in business travel, coupled with the rise of remote work, means demand for premium seating may never return to its pre-COVID levels. And since the A350-1000 is such a large plane, Qantas might have trouble filling it consistently. Enter the 787-9ER. The plane's smaller size seems better suited for our new reality. And since Qantas already operates a dozen 787s, it would be easier to integrate into its fleet than the A350. Plus, other New York and London-based 787 operators, including British Airways, United, and Virgin Atlantic, might also find value in the type, encouraging them to open up Australian-bound routes of their own. Again, this is all speculation, but even if Qantas does stick with the A350, building the Dash 9 ER would still be savvy. Right now, Boeing's longest-range jet, the 777-8, is proving to be a commercial flop, and it might get axed altogether. If it does, no other Boeing jet could compete with the A350-900 when it comes to range. The Dash 9 ER could change that, giving airlines another option for ultra-long-haul routes. Now, unlike the Dash 10 ER, Boeing declined to specify the performance targets of this jet. However, an analysis by Lehman News estimates the plane could end up with nearly 400 nautical miles more range than the A350-900. The only question that remains is timing. When is Boeing going to launch these planes? This is probably the most fluid variable. It could be in a few months or in a few years. It kind of depends on how long the COVID pandemic lingers. But with a strong product market fit, especially for the Dash 10 ER, I wouldn't be surprised if these jets are announced sooner rather than later. So what do you guys think about these new 787s? Do you think Boeing's smart to build them? Sound off in the comments down below. And thank you again to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. Now, I've personally been using Manscaped for quite some time now, so you could imagine I was pumped when they sent me their new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer. This new trimmer is super smart with a cordless charging system, waterproofing, and skin safe technology to reduce nicks and cuts to your um, sensitive areas. I also use their products to manage my beard. This is a picture of me before using their facial grooming line, and here it is after. I look a lot less disheveled. Manscaped has a wide array of high quality tools to help improve your grooming game from top to bottom. And if you go to the link in the video description, you'll get 20% off your first order, alongside free shipping and two free gifts. All you gotta do is use the code Kobe at checkout. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you'd like to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.